Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to include a summary box DV layout blog in your Gutenberg post. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is to log into our WordPress admin dashboard. And also we are going to need to use a template for this. Now the template we're going to use is absolutely free. I will leave a link to the blog post in the show notes below where you can get that template to download. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head over to Divi and click on Theme Builder because the first stage is to install our template. So I'm gonna come over here to the top on portability and then I'm gonna click import. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded my files for my template. So all I do now is to go to the post template and then just drag it into position here like that. And once you've done that, make sure you have override the default website template and allow import override assignments selected. And then click on import. And then I'll just click on relink them. All right, so once our template is installed, pretty much we are ready to go in and start working on our design. All right, so make sure you're saved here. Next, we're gonna go over to the post and click on add new. Well, now we're gonna give this post a name. Now you can name this post whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call mine layout. Now this post here is going to use the default editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose use default editor. And then I'm just gonna paste my text in here like that. And then I'm just gonna enter a space because this is where we're going to be adding our block. So over here, I'm just gonna add a forward slash so I can see all the Gutenberg blogs. And here we can see we have DV layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose DV layout. So this layout, we're going to build it from scratch. So I'm gonna click on build new layout. So this now is going to take us into our builder settings. So for this, we're going to build from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on start building. And I'm just gonna close this and go into my section settings. Here, I'm gonna to go to the background and give this a background color. And this is going to be white. And by the way, if you wanna follow the colors and the, and the settings, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we have our color, the next step is to add a top margin. So I'm gonna come over here to design spacing and our top margin here is going to be a hundred and we also need a left margin and so i'm going to come over here and this time for the left margin i want to add it as a percentage so i'm going to set it to minus 10 percent and we are also going to do the same thing to the right margin set this to minus 10 percent and then for our top and bottom padding i'm going to set this to zero okay so i'm just going to activate this chain since this is the same value so the top and bottom padding now is pretty much the same. All right, so now that we have that all set, we also need to set a border. So I'm gonna head over here to border. Here, we're going to break the chain because we need to add some rounded corners, but these rounded corners are going to be on the bottom corners. So I'm gonna add 16 pixels here and 16 here. Now, if you don't break the chain, what will happen is the this 16 pixels will be applied pretty much on all the sides. Okay, so the next step now is to add my box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here and choose box shadow. So the style I'm gonna go with is the first one, so I'm gonna select it. And then over here now on the uh, settings, I'm gonna start by adding my box shadow blur strength. So I'm gonna come over here and by default it's set to 18. I wanna set it to 60 and just soften the shadow a little bit. Next, we have the box shadow spread strength. So this is going to be 10 pixels. And then finally, we need to add our color. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit, click on this eyedropper tool. Now by default, we have this value here, but I'm just gonna override that by just highlighting what's between the brackets and pasting my value. Now you can see here, I have a much lighter shadow and that's the design we're trying to achieve. All right, so now that we have this all set, I'm gonna save this, and then we're gonna add our columns. So I'm gonna click on this plus button, and the column I'm gonna add is a single column. So before I can add any modules, I'm just gonna close this, and then I'm gonna go into my column settings. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon, and then click on design. So here on sizing, we want to activate gutter width, and then here on data width, by default it's set to three. So I'm gonna bring it all the way down to one and then equalize column heights. I am going to set this to yes. And then 
over here on the width, I'm going to set this to 100% and then maximum width 100% as well. Now it's time to add my top and bottom padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And for my padding, I'm just going to set this to zero for the top and the bottom, just so that we don't have any space above and below. Now we're going to go into our column and add our colors. So I'm going to go back over here to content and click on this gear icon for the column. So here now we can go in and add our color and our background color here is going to be white. And we also need to add some settings for this column. So I'm going to come over here to design spacing. So for the top padding, I'm going to set this to 70 pixels. And again, that let's make it the same 70, both for the top and the bottom. And let's do it for the left and right as well. So next, I'm gonna add my box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here, choose the first option. And for my blur strength, I'm gonna set this to 50%. So I'm gonna come over here, set this to 50%. Next, I'm going to add my color for my background. And this is going to be full transparent. So I'm gonna come over here to my eyedropper tool and just set this to zeros. And then I wanna add a bit of a style to this. So on hover, I'd like to add a bit of shadow to this. So to do that, I want to just hover over here and click on this arrow pointing up. And then you want to click on the hover tab. Click on the eyedropper tool. And then because we're adding a bit of transparency, you make sure that this slider here is anywhere in the middle. And then between the brackets, you want to paste these values here. Okay, now... As I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors and settings that I'm going to be using throughout this tutorial, I'm going to leave a link to the post in the blog post below. All right, so now that I have this, I'm just going to switch over back to my desktop. So now let's head over to our transform options. So I'm going to click on transform and I'm going to go with the very first example here and I want to slide zoom. So I'm going to go with 105% and notice that I'm applying the same value to the bottom as well. So it's important that you have your chain activated. All right, so with that set, the next step now is to just make sure I set my Z index. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced position and on Z index, we're gonna set this to 11. And then we're gonna save. Save one more time. Now it's time to add our modules. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and the first module we're gonna add is a text module. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. So. In here, we're just gonna add a number. So let's just add a zero one. So that's gonna be our number that we're gonna have in the text module. So now that we have this, the next step now is to add a gradient to the background. So let's start off by adding our very first color. So I'm gonna come over here to background, click on the second tab because this is where we get our settings for our gradient. Click on this plus button and add your first color. So I'm just going to paste my color in here like that. And then I'm also going to paste my second color by clicking over here and pasting it like that. So now that I have my both colors, the next step now is to add my gradient direction. So I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm going to set this to 165. Now let's head over here to design and go into text. So for our text fonts, I'm going to set this to Poppins. So I'm going to search for it and select it. Right, so now that we have this, as you can see in the background here, we can't really see the text because it's dark text or a slightly dark background. So let's fix that by coming over here to add color. And I'm going to set this to white. And you can see now we have great contrast. Next, we're going to set our text size. So I'm going to scroll down a bit and set this to 26. And for my text alignment, I'm going to make sure this is centered. So I'm gonna come over here and center it. Right, so the next step is to come over here to sizing and we are going to assign a width and a height. So for my width here, I'm gonna set this to 150 and my height to 150 as well. Next, we're gonna come over here to border and uh, we're going to add some rounded corners here, but only to three sides. So I'm gonna break the chain and just add my values and the value is 100 pixels. And as you can see, I'm applying it to the sides that I need it. And these are the shapes you're going to achieve with these settings. Next, we're going to apply some CSS. So we're going to come over here to advanced, custom CSS and to the main element, I'm just gonna paste the CSS code. Now this just pretty much centers our text here right in the middle because this is the only way we can do it with CSS. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to leave a link to the post which has all the CSS code and the colors that I'm using throughout this tutorial. 
All right, so now that I have this all set, uh, the next step now is to set my positioning. So I'm gonna come over here to position and I'm gonna go to absolute. So I'm gonna click here on this drop down and choose absolute. Okay, so now with that set, making sure that my position here is on the top left, I'm going to save. So the next stage is to add another text module. So over here, as you can see, it can be quite difficult to find your plus button to add your next module. So what I normally do is I just click over here and we can either use the layers or we can come over here to our wireframe view and then just click on this plus button to add our next module, which is going to be a text module. Do that and then switch back over here to the front end editor. All right, so now that I have that, um, you can just add some text. So I'm just gonna say first summary item, but of course you can add whatever text that you want in here. And I'm going to assign a heading three to this. So I'm gonna highlight it, go to paragraph and set this to heading three. Now let's stylize this heading. So I'm gonna come over here to text, I mean to design, heading text, make sure you're on the heading three tab because that won't work, okay? So over here, we're gonna set our size to 23. Next, we are going to add some spacing to this. So I'm gonna come over here and add a top margin. And we're gonna set this to 100 pixels because as you can see before, it was really way up there messing with our design. So the bottom margin is going to be 20 pixels. I'm gonna go ahead and add it over here. So pretty much that's all I need here. So I'm gonna save this and then next, I'm also going to add another module. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and this time the module is going to be a divider module. So I'm gonna search for it here and select it. So here you need to make sure show divider is set to yes. And then we are going to now go ahead and style this by coming over here to the design tab, line, and then we let's first go in and change our color. So I'm just gonna highlight this and paste my color in here. And you notice that the color is pretty much similar to what we have here in our design on the top. Okay, so now that we have this, make sure the, the line style is set to solid and the line position is set to top. Next, let's head over here to sizing. So here on sizing, I'm going to adjust my weight to about two pixels. And then my width is going to be 20% because I don't want the line going all the way to the end. So the quickest way to adjust that is just adding a... Um, 20% or a percentage. All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna save this and then next I'm gonna add some content. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and search for my text module and select it. So in this text module, you can add whatever you want. So I'm just gonna add some lorem text in here. So I'm just gonna copy this paragraph and paste that content over here. Okay, so now that I have my content, I'm going to save and then I'm just gonna close this. So now that I have this, as you can see, if we wanted to create another one of these, I mean, I'll be going through so many steps. So one quickest way to have more of these uh, content boxes is to come over here to your row settings and then just duplicate this a few times. So you can see now I have the exact duplicate over here to the right and you can continue this how many times you want. So for now, I'm just gonna add uh, just one so to differentiate these two, what you could do is to go into the column settings, design, box shadow, and I could just come over here and change my color for the shadow by clicking on the eyedropper tool and pasting my color in here like that. Next, you I mean you can see here these two items here have the same colors. We can also go in and change that. So I'm just gonna save this for now, save it one more time, and then go into the text settings, background, and change my colors in here. So I'm gonna change my first color, and I also need to add my second color. Now, as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so I've changed my color here. I am going to save this and then you wanna go in and also change. Now this one here is should be 02. And you can also go into the summary box here and also make some changes to this. So this one here is supposed to be second summary item. So, and again on the paragraph text, you can go in and change the paragraph text as well. All right, so I'm gonna save this and then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go back over here because I wanna move this over to the right. 
So first of all, I'm gonna go into design, border, and uh, play around with my border here. So on the top there, I'm just gonna set this to zero, and then this 100 needs to come over here, like that. Next, I'm going to go to advanced position, and then I'm gonna change my position to all the way to the right. So you can see here now, I can move this pretty much any way that I want to move it to. So this is how you do that. Just to keep this consistent, I'm gonna save this, and I'm also gonna change the divider color here, and go into design, line, change my color here from this pink, like that, so now this is fully designed. I'm gonna save that. Right, so now that we have these two, now it's up to you how many of these content boxes that you need. So if you need more, all you have to do is to go ahead and clone this. So you can either just, in fact, right now I can't see my handle, so I would have to come over here to wireframe view and then just clone the whole content block. Come over here to my front view and I can see everything here. So now that we have all these cloned, you can now go in and change the titles. You can change the colors as I've shown you here when I was doing the second item. Now let's say you wanna bring these a bit closer together. Uh, what you could also do is to go into the section settings here and uh, go to design, spacing. And what we can do here is to start by working on our margins and let's set this to minus five. And on the right margin, we're gonna set this to minus five as well. So this top margin here, we can just go ahead and delete it. And now you can see they're right below the top items that we have here. Okay, so now that we have this, now we can go ahead and save. And I'm gonna save and exit. Now this is going to take us back into our Gutenberg editor. So you can see here my content is being loaded in here. And there we go. Okay, so let's hit publish publish one more time and now we're going to take a look at the post and I'm going to open this in a new tab. So they are our summary boxes. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.